Now, we're going to take this idea here, this particular one we just did, this multiplication idea, right? And I promised on Tuesday that we would move into division, which division is not that hard, right? Like, you can multiply, you can divide. It stands to reason if you can do one, you can do the other. But it is actually trickier, okay? So make a new subheading for me, right? Which is multiplication and division, thinking about multiplication and division. And before we get into the, the algorithms, the process, we want to understand what we're actually doing. Now, I've said this many times, I hope it's starting to sink in, right? The classic mathematician's strategy when attacking a hard problem is to think about a similar problem that's easier and try and take some of those lessons and apply them to the harder problem, okay? Because sometimes a hard problem is just overwhelming by just looking at it and you're like, I don't know where to start, right? But if you can take one which is smaller, just chew at it a little bit and you can make some progress, then you can apply that progress to your trickier one. So multiplication and division, way before we met polynomials, right? We were multiplying and dividing just regular numbers, okay? So, example. Let's think about something like this. We can multiply these numbers, right? 7 times 43. Now, I'm deliberately asking us to do this one by hand, even though your calculator can do it. Because even though your calculator can do this, your calculator cannot do this. It can't take this algebra. If you let that those x's equal to numbers, and I've shown you how to input numbers into your calculator as variables, it'll, it'll do that quite happily. But the algebra itself is something your scientific calculator cannot, is not equipped to do, okay? So therefore, I want to do this by hand so that when we get to polynomials, you'll be okay. How do I do this by hand? Okay, I'll first do, I'll do my units, right? So I go three times seven, which is 21, okay? And then I do my tens. So because it's tens, I put zero there, and then I go four times seven, which is 20, 28, right? 28. What do I do with those numbers? Add I add them, very good, because I've done this multiplication, done that multiplication, I don't need to multiply any more, and you get an answer out. Okay, now, this process of multiplication is exactly mirrored by the process of division. I can take this number down the bottom, and I know it must be a multiple of 7, you see that? Because that's how I got the number, right? So let's just quickly rehearse this. If I have 301, and I want to divide it by 7, what do I do? Like, how do I actually, yeah? You look at the first numbers and you see if they can go into seven. Fantastic. So I look, the, f the very first number is three. Does, um, can, I, can I get any sevens out of three? And the answer is no. So you go to the next one. 30, can I get any sevens out of that? And the answer is yes, I can. I can get four of them. So you say four up here. What do you do with that four? You write it below 30. I'm going to write another below 30, but the number I'm going to write is not four, but four sevens. Right? Like that's how much of that 30 gets taken out when I divide it by 7. 4 by 7, of course, is 28. Right? So what do I do with this 28? Subtract. I uh, subtract, okay? So I say 30 take away 28 is 2. Right? And then I repeat. I say, well, how many 7s can I get out of 2? Answer, none. So then I go to the next number. That's why I go to the next number. It's not just because, like, it's because I, what, I, what I do, it's because I can't get any more 7s here. So you write the 21 down and you say, how many 7s can I get now? And the answer is 3, which is rather a relief, right? Because that's, that's what we started with. I'm not quite finished yet though. I'm not quite finished. What would I normally do at this stage? Remember I went 4 by 7 gives me 28. So not now at this stage I would usually go 3 by 7 gives me 21. And there's a 0 here. What's that 0 about? The zero is important. Remainder. It's the remainder, very good. It's what, what's left over when I divide, but there isn't a remainder for this, right? Because it evenly divides. Does that make sense? Okay, really quickly, now that you remember, okay, multiplication, division, how they work, let's just do another one, and we'll just go straight to the division, because that's what I'm focusing on. Multiplication of polynomials, fine, okay? But division, let's try, let's try something like this. Um, let's give this a spin, okay? What do I do? Talk me through it. So there's a 5, which is not divisible by it. So Good. Go 50, which is divisible by it. Good. Which is hold on, hold on, hold on. Not divis I think what you mean is I can, I can get 8s out of it. It's <coughs> big enough that I can get 8s out of it, right? Because 50 is <laughs> not divisible by 8, okay? And then what do I do? Uh, how many 8s is 50? Okay, how many? 6. I can get 6 because 6 times 8 is 48 and then I, I can't do any more. So when I say I can get six of them, 
I multiply down, and what do I do with this 48? I subtract. There I am. What do I do with that guy? I can't, I can't get any 8s out of 2, so that's why I appeal to the next number. Right? And then how many 8s can I get out of that? I can get 2 of them. Right? I get 2. 2 times 8 gives me 16, and what do I do with that? That's the remainder. Okay, so I'm going to write that up here. Okay, are you happy with that? Now, what this means is, let's just step back for a second. This process here of division means 7 times 43 is 301. Like that's, that's these numbers connected here. Okay? Um, that's what I've got over here. When I've got a remainder, what does this mean? It's, it's ever so slightly different. It's these four numbers, they're all connected, right? I can say 503 is equal to, what's it equal to on the basis of all these numbers up here? I can write it as a fraction if I, if I divide here, but I actually want to think about 503, the whole number, just like I think of a polynomial as a whole polynomial. 7 times 43 equals 301. That's the multiplication sentence that goes with this, okay? Uh, you can think about it as inverses, right? You've got multiplication as a function, you've got division as its inverse, okay? So this time, I can say 503, the inverse of this, right, is going to be 8 times 62, <coughs> but there's a remainder hanging on, that guy. Are you happy with that? So I get this statement, okay, this division statement, out of this process of long division, okay? Long division gives me a statement that connects all of these numbers together. So you yeah. reverse the operation to check this right. That's exactly right. And in fact, you can go ahead and you can check in your calculator. What's 8 times 62 plus 7? Okay, I'm guessing 8 times 62 is 494? 6? Wait, 6? 6. six. Right, 496. Because we're that good at multiplication, right? No, we're probably good at subtraction. But there you go. That's the idea. Okay. Now, division with numbers. Long division with numbers. We're okay with this. We're comfortable with this. But we're in the polynomial land. Okay? So how do we do this? 